Hi guys, what's up? I'm super excited today because I've just received my new stand mixer. Now you have to know that when it comes to taking big decisions, I'm just very bad. Three years ago, I realized that my old stand mixer was not enough anymore. So it took me three years to make up my mind, but finally here it is, the K-Mix. I chose it over the KitchenAid because it's equally fancy, less girly, and it's got a nicer color, which matches with my polo. So now that I have this little baby here, I thought I should put it to the test right away with something that never came out well with my old mixer, brioche. A brioche is just one of the many pastries that you can get for breakfast here in France. It's sweet, it's very buttery and soft. It comes in many shapes and sizes, but today I'm just going to make the simplest one, the round brioche. So the ingredients are 250 grams of strong flour, 30 grams of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, 10 grams of fresh yeast, 3 eggs, 165 grams of soft butter, and 2 egg yolks for the egg wash. In this recipe we're going to add a lot of butter, which has the power to loosen gluten strands. This means that if we want to get a thick dough in the end, we need to use a very strong flour. The strength of a flour is usually represented by a number called W. A W180 flour is weak, for example. In this recipe, I used a W380 flour. If you don't find a package that clearly states the W number, then look for a Manitoba flour, which is usually very strong and perfect for brioche. So to start, you have to melt the yeast in a bit of water. It's better if the water is lukewarm, between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius. It must not be too hot, otherwise it will kill the yeast bacteria. Pour the yeast in the bowl of a mixer and then cover it with flour. Then it's time for the sugar. Pour it all on one side of the bowl. Next, add the salt in another side of the bowl. None of them should enter in direct contact with the yeast, otherwise it will die. Add the three whole eggs together, then start mixing at low speed with the hook attachment. Mix approximately for 5 to 10 minutes until a thick dough forms. Well, you can also knead by hand if you want, but in that case, well, good luck. After this, it's time to add the room temperature diced butter, little by little. This whole process should take around 2 minutes. Once all the butter is incorporated, slightly increase the speed and keep on mixing for around 20 minutes. In the end, the dough will be very firm and it will clear the sides of the bowl. Make a bowl with the dough, cover it, and let it rise at room temperature for around an hour until it doubles in size. After this, refrigerate for at least two hours or better overnight. Once the dough has fully risen and is fridged cold, you can portion it into 60 gram pieces. And yes, you should weigh piece by piece so that the brioche are evenly baked. Then lightly flour your work surface and fold a piece of dough in three to make a ball. Roll each ball quickly. Use the palm of your hand to press from the top and your fingers to give a rounded shape. If you perform the movement correctly, the brioche will look perfectly round and completely smooth. Otherwise, just try again. Place all the brioche on a parchment lined baking tray, making sure there is enough space for them to double in size. Beat together two egg yolks, then brush each brioche with this egg wash. Now that the brioche are shaped and brushed with egg whites, we just need to let them proof which means rise again until they double in size. It usually takes one hour to one hour and a half and the perfect temperature will be 25 to 30 degrees. Sure, you can leave them at room temperature, but if you want, you can also leave them in the oven with the light on. After one hour and a half, the brioche will have doubled in size. If not, maybe just wait a bit more. Brush them again with the egg wash. Immediately add on top coarse sugar for a traditional look or simply normal sugar, which I find more modern and original. Finally, bake the brioche at 180 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. And here is the final result. The brioche are well baked when they are light to hold in your hand and the bottom is golden brown. They are also perfect when the inside easily pulls apart. So here is the final result. In the end, making brioche is not that difficult provided you have a good mixer. I'm very satisfied with the result because it's super soft and I can't wait to try it. Mm. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will try brioche soon for breakfast. Don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time for another recipe. Bye!